Pastor Rodney Hamer and my uh, senior pastor of Abiding Faith Christian Center. I would like to welcome you to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday morning service. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. We're so glad that you're tuning in on Facebook and tuning in on the video recording in the near future. And for those who are here this morning, visit for the first time. We welcome you to Abiding Faith Christian Center. Our vision for Abiding Faith Christian Center. That's right. You have a hand. Amen. Praise God for our visitors. Our vision through the teaching and preaching of the word, we will reach the lost, bring restoration to backsliders, give hope to the hopeless, minister healing to the afflicted, and bring believers to spiritual maturity that would enable them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our mission statement is that through the teaching and preaching of the word, we are, um, um, our mission statement, praise God, is to establish, empower, and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Because without purpose, you have nothing to guide you into your divine destiny in life. Can you say amen? amen. So we have a vision and a mission statement. Well, we well, want to tell those of you on the Facebook, on those of you on the video recording and on YouTube in the near future, however you access this message, that we are located at the Liberty Center at 1428 West Court Street, and that's across from the New Powers High School. That's in Flint, Michigan, 48503. Our Bible study times is on every Thursday at 6 p.m., and we have Sunday service, of course, at every Sunday at 11 p.m. A.M. You will be blessed if you come on down and join with us. Amen? Amen. So we invite you to come and join with us. Well, this morning, Pastor Pat, a pastor, my wife, my loving wife, is going to give the message this morning. Praise God. I don't have the title of the message, but I do know one thing. The Holy Ghost is going to speak <laughs> to you through her. Amen? Amen. I am so excited. We minister together many times together, and I've heard her minister also by herself. Praise the Lord. Receive. Praise Receiving the blessings is a message, praise God. Our audio department told me just a moment ago, those who are on Facebook, well, we're going to have her come down front, but I want you to give her a loud, a loud warm a welcome by clapping your hands amen. for Pastor, Pastor Patricia A. Hamer. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're raising up others also to help in the ministry. And so I am so glad that you are here today. Uh, at Abiding Faith Christian Center, our visitors, we are glad that you're here. And I know that God has a word for you on today. All of, the, that, all of you that are here, God has a word for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I believe that when we come together as believers, and when pastor or I minister, we minister under the Holy Ghost. Amen under the unction of the Holy Ghost and we know that God has a word for you today. So I want your hearts to be open to receive on today in Jesus name. So let's go ahead and pray before we get started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness toward us, oh God. Father, you love us enough to send your word to us, Lord God. A word that is in season, a word that is now, a word that is for today in Jesus' name. And we open up our spirits to you right now, Lord God, to receive from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. I'm excited about the word on today. And it's amazing. I was thinking about it earlier this week um, after Pastor and I talked about it. And I had something else in mind. And you know how you begin studying and God knows who's going to be here. Amen. And he knows exactly what we need for this day. And I'll tell you what, if I, as uh, uh, my former pastor used to say, if I start eating off my own plate, okay, just, just uh, ignore me, okay? Because as I was going through this word last night, and there were different parts that jumped out at me and just blessed me and brought me to tears. Because, you know, as I study and as pastors study, uh, we get blessed first, amen? If we can't get blessed, hey, we all don't know if we'd be able to bless you all. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the word and the, uh, uh, our subject, our title today is Receiving the Blessing. And Sister Felicia was supposed to keep that until I said it. Amen? <laughs> Her and Pastor, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, amen. Uh, God is so good. It's good to have fun at church. Amen? Amen. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. We'll have to be all uptight and, you know, it's good to have fun at church. But they, hey, they tickle me anyway, Pastor and Felicia, when they be uh, working things out on the sound. Amen. <laughs> they tickle me anyway. And sometimes I tell Felicia, I was like, that's your pastor, girl. That's your pastor. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, and we love her and we love everyone that's here. And we appreciate the members of Abiding Faith Christian Center. We appreciate your diligence and, and your just attendance to come and just wanting to be here. We appreciate that. So uh, I just wanted to remind you, Pastor just finished an awesome, awesome series on obedience to God brings the blessing. Were you blessed by that series? Amen. Obedience to God, it brings the blessing. Okay, when you're obedient to God, that means the blessing automatically comes. It brings the blessing. Okay, obedience to God brings a blessing. So now that we are walking in obedience, because that's what we're doing, we heard the word, we received the word, and now we're acting on the word. So we're walking in obedience. So after walking in obedience, we must expect the blessing. Okay, we must expect the blessing. And not just to benefit your life, but so that others... You know, it's, it's just not all about us. So others can see God manifesting in your life, and they desire what you have, Amen. which is Jesus. Amen. The focus is not on you, but it's on Jesus. Amen. When they ask you about the hope and the blessings on your life, then you can direct them to Jesus. Amen. Okay? So we're going to receive the blessing. And when the blessing comes, we must receive it. We must take hold of the blessing when it comes. Because we're walking in obedience and all we have to do now is to receive the blessing. That's what we need to do. And sometimes if we're not careful, we'll start examining ourselves and see if we deserve the blessing. I mean, when you, when you, when you just... Just looking at yourself, no, you don't deserve it. But it's because of Jesus operating in your life that it made you worthy of the blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you have to get in position. You're obedient to the word of God right now. So get yourself in position to receive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the blessing comes, we must receive it. It's not that you can't get it. It's not that you can't get it. You have to believe it and receive it. Amen. And, and, and what I find out sometimes, we don't have a problem getting it in our heads. Believing it and thinking it. We have a problem receiving it for us. Because we filter it through so much. But God wants you to get in position right now. Not tomorrow, not when I get home, I'm going to get everything together, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But he wants you to get in position right now. Somebody say right now. Right now. Right now. Get yourself in position to receive the blessing. And pastor quotes many times Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And some scriptures I'm going to quote and some I'll tell you to turn to. But you can write it down in your notes, Mark eleven twenty four. it says, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. It says, believe that you receive. So you got to believe and you got to what? Receive. Say, I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. Hallelujah. Right now, right now. I'm, receiving I'm receiving the blessings of God. Blessings and let me tell you what it says in the Amplified. It says, for this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will. And how do we know God's will? That's right, because he said it and because of his word. That's how we know the will of God. If you can, if you can find it in the word, you can stand on it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It says in accordance with, with God's will, believe with confident trust. Yes. 
that you have received them and they will be given to you. The moment you pray, you got to believe that you have received it because you've put that request out. Okay. I got some other things. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And you have to know that it's there. Once you pray for it, you got to know that it's there and then make the withdrawal. Amen. Know that it's there and make the withdrawal. That's why you have to put the word in you so that you can make a withdrawal yes. on the word. If the word is not on the inside, there is nothing for you to withdraw. The word is the currency of faith. The word is the currency of faith. If you deposit the word, then you can withdraw faith. Amen? Because we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word is your currency of faith deposit the word you withdraw faith when I need it it's there hallelujah because we are supposed to be people that walk by faith and not by sight and in order to believe you have to have someone or something to stand up on and we stand on the word of God we confess that we're believers and I always say believers do what believe Hallelujah. Glory to God. Believers believe. And we need to be believers. Not just when we get together in church and be stirred by the word of God. But when you leave this building. This word is for when you leave this building. That you can walk as a believer of Jesus Christ. And when you walk as a believer of Jesus Christ. That means that everything that is contained in the word is yours. Hallelujah. When you begin to walk in the word and believe the word and trust in the word, I tell you what, you walk with a new confidence. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you know who you are in Christ Jesus. And that's the way God wants us to walk. He wants us to walk in confidence in him. Hallelujah. And the only way that we can do that is by the word of God. Amen. Having that word on the inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not about us. But it's about him. Yes. Glory to God. We need to be able to draw on the word of God. Hallelujah. And is there enough word on, on the inside of you to draw on? Hallelujah. If you say, and I really want y'all to ask that out loud, but that's okay. <laughs> but if, amen. But if, if, if there's not enough word on the inside of you, it, it's a choice. You can choose to put the word of God on the inside of you or you can choose not it's a choice and, and, and you know sometimes we, we think because somebody is in a different position or, or somebody is, is you see God moving in somebody's life we think oh my God that's what I want I don't know I don't know if I could ever get to that oh that's for Pastor Pat that's for Pastor Rodney that's for the apostle that's for the evangelist the teacher no it's for you Hallelujah. And you notice some of the things I'm saying are the same things that pastor has been ministering. And God is just coming to confirm what the word has already said. What the man of God has already said. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth. Just write the scripture down. And I'm going to have you turn to some in a minute. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. So how about we stand on something that ain't going nowhere? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get the word on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And you can make a withdrawal on the word on the inside of you. How many of you, and you don't have to answer, just answer to yourself. How many of you have been in situations where you had a choice to obey the word and obey or not obey the word? You've been in a situation where the word of God came up on the inside of you and you made a choice to obey it. That's your defense. That's the word coming up. In, that's believing in the word and receiving the word and receiving the direction that God has given you to go in. And sometimes we're in situations, the word comes up and we reject it. We just bypass it. 
And what we do, the thing is, sometimes what we do when we do that is that we lean on the flesh. We lean on our experiences. Well, that ain't never happened for me before. Yeah, I understand. But, you know, this, this, is, this is some of the excuses that people use. Well, well you know, we in this earth and things happen. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, we're just human. And, and I'm, one of the things I hear sometimes, just heard it the other day. I was talk Yesterday I was talking to a lady in the store. And uh, uh, she's in her 70s. She said, yeah, you know, uh, I was concerned. Her husband actually mentioned it. He said, uh, yeah, she was concerned about getting in her 70s. <laughs> See, we, we get these, 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 set, these mindsets that come from the world and the world's thinking that do not line up with the word of God. We need to get our thoughts lined up with the word of God. I'm not afraid of 70, 80, 90, 100, however old I get. I will not live in fear of that. Amen. Hallelujah. I will not confess. I remember a time I was working with a young lady, and she told me she wore glasses for reading. That, that don't mean nothing. I'm just, I'm just using this as my example. Okay, she wears glasses for reading. And I do wear glasses for distance, but she wears glasses for reading. And she told me, she said, when you get a certain age, you're going to have to wear reading glasses. I said, no, I'm not. She just confessed that, that that's what I'm going to have to. I did not receive that. Just because she said, you know what, to today I don't have to wear reading glasses. <laughs> I should have said the other two, huh? <laughs> the one for distance. <laughs> but you know what? We don't, we don't receive everything that we hear. What we do receive is the word of God. And when you receive the word of God, you receive the blessings. And let me tell you this. Don't get talked out of your blessings. There are promises that God has given to you and you've allowed somebody or situations to talk you out of those blessings. Somebody or because situations can talk. Do you know that? Situations come up, they'll start speaking to you. <laughs> you feel a pain here, oh my gosh. Or you feel a pain here, oh I'm about to get a headache. See, we just speak things. That's why we got to watch what we say. But don't get talked out of your blessing. If God has given you a promise, hold on to it. And this is personal with God, with you, and for others. This is personal. And not for others, but with the devil. With God. With you and with the devil. The devil is trying to take us out. Or what he, if he can't take us out, what he tries to do is neutralize us. Make us so that we're ineffective. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I'm born again. But I'm ineffective. I'm not walking in the power and the authority of God. So this is personal. And you know what? It's personal to me. Because I got some situations that try to talk to me. But I tell you what, I talk back to them with the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm not getting talked out of what God has promised me. I don't care who it is. I'm not getting talked out of it. Hallelujah. And if they want to believe a certain thing, that's, that's their own belief. As I was uh, coming up, I can remember people saying different things because I was confessing, making certain confessions. And, and sometimes they would say, well, that's not for you. Or that may, that, no, what they didn't say was for me. They said, that may not be for everybody. I said, well, that may be your confession, but that's not my confession. And then I saw the manifestation of the thing that I prayed for. Because I held on to the blessing. I held on to the word of God. I drew on the word on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And that's what we, want, we don't want to do. We don't get, want to get talked out of our blessing. And have you limited your requests because of something that has happened or hasn't happened? Have you stopped making your requests because of something that has happened or hasn't happened yet? Think about it. And what I want you to do is grab that request again. 
grab that blessing again and hold on to it. And I'm going to share with you some scriptures. I'm going to have you turn to it. Um, and, and I was thinking about, um, and I've shared this before, I was thinking about um, um, the time I was believing God for something. And I'm going to uh, share this. I know my husband don't mind. Uh, of course, you know, I was married before my husband passed, my first husband passed. And there were some promises that I was waiting on and believing in. And then after he passed, I was like, what the heck? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. And, and, and I was in a church, the church I was in before, and, and um, uh, Pastor, Pastor Tanya was ministering about um, uh, dreaming. And on my way home, I just broke down and started crying. I said, the dream is dead. How am I going to dream? The dream is dead. And the Holy Spirit, after all my little crying and all that, you know, he'll let us do that, throw our little fit. And after my crying, he said, dream, dream again. So I thought the thing that God had promised me was gone because he had passed. But it didn't. God, do you know God, he already knew that that was going to happen. And so after that happened, I just, you know, I got through it. And then I went on serving the Lord because my dream was that we would be able to minister together. And, you know, just that was my dream. And then later on, God blessed me Amen. with somebody I didn't realize I was going to marry a pastor. I did not. <laughs> that was not in my plans. But God blessed me with another man of God. That I can minister with. That the dream can come to pass. So just because a situation has happened. It does not mean that the dream is dead. It does not mean that the blessing is dead. And see I had to grab a hold to that again. Because I was, I was like wait a minute, wait a minute. This wasn't in the plan. But look how God worked it out where we're ministering together because I held on to the promises of God. I kept believing. I did not let that situation deter me from what God had promised me. I held on to it and God had a blessing in store for me. Amen. Hallelujah. But I had to wait on it. Yes. Glory to God. I had to trust in God. During this transition time, I had to believe him. And what I do want you to do is turn to Hebrews 10. Turn to Hebrews 10. Oh, God is faithful, y'all. And you know what? God is, he is no respecter of persons. What he's done for me. He can do for you. He's no respecter of persons. And as pastors say, he's a respecter of faith. Hallelujah. Turn to Hebrews 10. And we're going to look at uh, 35 and 36. Hebrews 10. 35 and 36. Everybody got it? Okay. Let me read it. It says, cast. That means don't throw it away. Cast not away therefore your confidence. Which hath great recompense or promise of reward for you have need of patience or persistence or endurance that after you have done the will of God that ye might receive the promise after I kept on doing the will of God and I received the promise and that's what you have to do. You have to keep on doing the will of God, regardless of the, way, the, the way the situation is looking. You have to keep on doing the will of God so that you can receive the promise. Amen. You can't give up in between time. And if you have a time where you gave up, then repent and get back on track. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repent and get back on track. Yes. Hallelujah. God is a redeemer of time. Yes. Hallelujah. He can redeem the time. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Amen. And in the Amplified for that scripture, it says, Do not, therefore, fling away your fearless confidence. And that's what 
ah, when I moved my hand like that, I just, I thought about how sometimes situations happen in people's lives. And sometimes they're devastating. I've had some devastating stuff to happen in my life. I mean, I was like, Jesus, what you trying to do? Make me a poster child for suffering? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I ain't lying. I mean, that is the truth. <laughs> oh, gosh, you know. And you know what? There, are, there were times that I felt like just forget it. You know how we do that? We just say forget it. But he's telling us, don't fling away your fearless confidence. For it carries, it carries it, it's inherent in it. It comes with it. It carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Yeah. If you hold on to the promise, yeah. Yeah. hallelujah, I, there were some promises, there are some things that I was believing God for that it took a long time for it to happen. But don't you know in God's time, time, as pastors say so many times, time don't mean nothing to him. <laughs> we, we say 20 years and it ain't even a drop in a bucket to him. Amen. Hallelujah. So hold on for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. For you have need of patient endurance. To bear up under difficult circumstances. Without compromising. This is amplified. Let me say that one more time. For you have need. This is what God said you need it. You, this is what you need. You need patience. Endurance. To bear up under difficult circumstances. Without compromising. Don't compromise the word of God. Don't compromise the promise. If God has given you a promise, don't come up with the B, C, D plan. Sometimes say, well, maybe, maybe God wanted to do it this way just because of something that happened. And we come up with another plan. No, God just have an A plan. There's, there, it's just a plan. It ain't no B, C, D, E. It's just a plan. It's just a promise that he has for you. Okay, when we stand on the word of God to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising so that when you have carried out the will of God, you carried it out, you endured, you patiently walked through it, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. Hold on. Keep confessing what God has told you. Hold on to the promise. Don't give it up. No matter what has happened, because we're people that walk by faith and not by sight, we cannot be moved by what we see. The only thing that we need to be moved by is the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. The word of God is the only thing that needs to move us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I shall not be moved off the promises of God. I'm going to hold on to the promises. And when I find myself trying to slip, I'm going to repent and get back on course. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. As pastor was ministering uh, uh, on obedience to God brings a blessing and he was tying faith into it also. He's been ministering on faith. And you know what? During that time, I've been searching my heart and dealing with my heart and finding areas. Okay, am I really standing on faith? Or I'm just, am I just going through a motion in the area? I start examining the areas of my life. And you know what? Can't nobody examine your areas like you. Somebody else can say something, but they don't know you. So it caused me to start examining some areas of my life to find out if I was really walking in faith in that area. And I had to, I had to make some adjustments. And one of, the, one of the main things that I had to make adjustments in is what I said. Because if I was not speaking the promise, 
I was speaking doubt and unbelief. And that is not what I wanted manifested in my life. I wanted the promise manifested in my life. And you cannot speak the promise and then speak doubt and unbelief because what you do, you just cancel it out. That's why we're so, Pastor and I are so adamant about what you say. And when we come in the building, we're adamant about what you say. Because abiding faith, listen to our name. Abiding faith. That means faith remains in us. Yes. When you are members of abiding faith, you are faith people. Yes. You are people that believe the word. And even if you are not a member of abiding faith, believers need to be walking in faith yes. and walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And what I want you to do right now is turn to Hebrews 10. You're still you're in Hebrews. Just flip it back. And we're going to look at the, uh, and you may not have to flip in your Bible, <laughs> verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23. And it says, let us hold fast. In other words, be persistent in the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is what? Faithful. He's faithful. He can't be nothing but faithful. That's who he is. He's faithful. For he is faithful that promised. And let me read this version. It says, let us seize. In other words, grab a hold of it. And hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. Don't waver. For he who, is pro he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. Amen. He's reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. And you know what? God, this is, this is what I've noticed sometimes in, in, uh, in my life and I've seen in others. But I, I'm going to judge myself. You know how sometimes you believe God for something and you start seeing the manifestation of it? And then it looks like it's going back the other way. And you know what we do? We start talking about that other way. <laughs> Instead of standing on what God has said, we talk about what we see. Instead of standing on that word, on what God has said, you, God, what he's doing, he's showing you the tricklings of the blessing just so you'll keep on believing. God will give you glimpses of the manifestation. But sometimes what we do, if the situation looks like it's going back south, then we start speaking about it going back south. Instead of saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, I walk by faith and not by sight. God, I believe your word. I know what you said. All of your promises are yea and amen. Your word is true, God. You are faithful to your promise. Hallelujah. We got to make sure that we don't turn back the other way. Amen. And I had to judge myself in some areas like that. Amen. Where I got to stick with this word. I don't care what nobody else say. I don't care what nobody else do. And sometimes folk look at you cross-eyed. You know because they think you crazy. You know what I'm saying. But I tell you what. I'm believing God for the promise. I don't care what. I'm standing on what God has told me. And I believe God. I don't care what you say. I believe God. Hallelujah. And sometimes, sometimes you can't always share. Hallelujah. You can't always share what you are believing God for. Sometimes you got to keep it to yourself. Or you can talk to other believers that you know are going to get in agreement with you. Amen. And as y'all know, uh, uh, Pastor Pat is really big on talking uh, uh, making sure we have the right confessions mm -hmm. and that we're uh, positive people. And when I say positive, I'm talking about the word, when you're standing on the word and not talking about negativity all the time because we want to keep an atmosphere yes. Yes. of faith. Yes. You want to have an atmosphere of faith in your home. Amen. 
And sometimes you got to check each other. Me and pastor, sometimes we check each other. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what we believe in? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we want to make sure that we stay in faith. Okay, y'all going to commit? Say, so I'm staying in faith. Say, I'm staying in faith. I'm staying in faith. I'm believing God. I'm now flip, now I do want you to flip back to the sixth chapter. And the twelfth verse. The sixth chapter and the twelfth verse. And it says. That you be not slowful. Everybody got it? Okay. That you be not slowful. But followers of them. Or imitators of them. Who through faith. And patience. Inherit. Or they obtained. Wait a minute. Let me get back to. They inherit the promise. Look at verse 13. It said, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. God gave a promise to Abraham. And do you know it took, it took time, it took years for that promise to come to pass. And if God has given you a promise, and it hasn't come to pass. You are not too old for it not to come to pass. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter. Sometimes we look at how old we are and all this time to pass. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Abraham, I'm sure that probably crossed his mind at one point or another. <laughs> but he kept believing. And the promise came to pass. And we got to hold on to the promise no matter how much time has gone by. No matter what situation you're in right now, you have to hold on to the promise. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. And the Amplified said, so that you will not be spiritually sluggish. That's the part where it said that you be not slowful. That you will not be spiritually sluggish, but will instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in him and in his power. And by patient endurance, even when suffering, are now inheriting the promises. And see, we can't put God on the same level as we put other people. Because sometimes other people have let us down. Other people have promised things and haven't come through on their promise. So it's, it's caused our heart to be broken. And then we sometimes compare that to, way, to, to God. And there's no comparison to what somebody has done to you to our God. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He's never broken a promise to you. He's never broken a promise to you. If anything, we have stepped out of belief into unbelief, and God can't get that blessing through to you. So all you have to do now is make a decision to jump back into believing God, to jump back into faith, to jump back into confidence and trust in the Lord, and God can get that promise to you. He can get that thing that you have prayed for to you yeah. Yeah. hallelujah he's looking to bless you yeah. hallelujah he wants to bless you yeah. glory yeah. to God yeah. God loves you and he wants to see his children blessed yeah. Yeah. hallelujah yeah. he wants to see you blessed yeah. He wants to see you prosper. He said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yeah. Hallelujah. He wants to bless you abundantly. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. He wants you to have abundance in your spiritual walk. He wants you to have abundance in your natural walk. Yeah. Glory to God. Every area of our life. It should be abundance in every area of our life. Yeah. Glory to God. If you got an area in your life that abundance doesn't show up in, hallelujah, you rebuke the devil, you get your faith back, and you walk in abundance in that area in the name of Jesus. And if it has not manifested, if it has not manifested yet, you walk like it's manifested. Yeah. Amen. 
God, hallelujah. I'm believing God for abundance of finances. There have been times where I walk in the high-end stores that I know I can't pay for that stuff right now. Amen. But I tell you what, I walk through there, I look at that stuff, and I'll say, and they'll say, oh, but can I help you? I was like, this is nice. And they'll show me the price of it. I look at the price of it. I say, oh, that ain't bad. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Because I'm walking in abundance. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm walking as a king's kid. Amen. I'm a child of the king. Amen. Glory to God. I am a child of the king. Yes. Glory to God. And in the kingdom of God, there's nothing missing and nothing broken. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything is in place. Yes. So I'm obtaining the promises of God. Yes. Hallelujah. I got confidence. Yes. 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 I'm choosing to believe him. Amen. I'm choosing to believe that God restores. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You cannot let your past determine whether you can receive. Amen. And it's not too late. Amen. If you haven't fulfilled even your purpose, it is not too late. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we think we are past time. But whatever purpose God has given you, as long as you live it and you have breath in your body, Amen. that purpose is still alive on the inside of you. God does not change your purpose because of your age or because of what has happened to you. The purpose is still the same. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I receive. Yes. Hallelujah. I receive. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. There have been times that the enemy has yes. made me feel like you pass time. You pass time. Yes. But the devil is a liar. Yes. Glory to God. I will fulfill the will of God in my life. You will fulfill the will of God in your life. I don't care what's going on in your life right now. The will of God can still be fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. I don't care what has happened. I don't care how old you are. It's not too late. Hallelujah. I don't care if you're walking with a stick. Hallelujah. It's not too late. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't care what condition your body is right now. It's not too late. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. And all he speaks is lies. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. If it's not good and it's not perfect, it does not come from God. Hallelujah. I'm walking in the blessing. I'm walking in the blessing. I'm walking in the blessing. Come on, say, I'm walking in the blessing. I'm walking in the blessing. Woo, come on, say to yourself, I'm walking in the blessing. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. God is a restorer. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah, he's a restorer. Let's quickly flip over to Joel 2. Hallelujah. Joel, that's in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Right next to Daniel, I believe it is. Uh, uh, Hosea. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessing. I'm receiving the blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Arabasakaya. Don't believe the lies of the enemy anymore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's tormented you long enough. Don't believe his lies anymore. Believe the word of God. His promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He's a restorer. Hallelujah. God does not count you out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're still in the race. You're still in the running. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Joel 2. Have you found that? I don't know if I told you the chapter, but Joel 2. Joel. 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 
<laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love him. I love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know, this is uh, right before they're talking about uh, some of the stuff that Israel had went to and then the promises that God had promised him, and some of them were on, under con, on conditions. But you know what? The Bible's with the uh, uh, pastor ministered. Obedience to the word brings the blessing. Amen. So we've been obedient to the word. We are obeying the word. So now we can receive the blessing. Amen. Let's look at Joel. This is to us. It's to the children of Israel, but it's also to us, God's children. Amen. Look at this. Look what he says. Let's, let's, let's go up to 23. And I'm going to read down to where I want to get to. Verse 23, uh, chapter 2, 23. It says, uh, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Got a little echo. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. In other words, this is everything that you need to flourish. Amen. Okay, all these rains. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Look at this. Look at this. Come on, look down there and read this. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Look at this. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And I'm going to read 27. And it says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. God is a God of restoration. He said he'll restore the years. I like that. Hallelujah, because some of us need some years restored. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll restore the years. I love it. I love it. I love it. The years. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The devil likes to remind us of the years that we'd have lost. Hallelujah. But you know what I think I thank God for? That those years that we feel like that we've lost. He rolls it in and makes it a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. So what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for the good. Hallelujah. You can share your testimony with someone else that they may not go down that road. Or if they went down that road, you can show them how God brought you out. Amen. Hallelujah. Every one of us have a testimony. Don't ever be ashamed of your testimony. Don't ever be ashamed to share your testimony. I tell you what, I've, I've won many people. Uh, um, I've won people to the Lord, but I've, I've taught, ministered to many people to where they got hope again. Just from sharing my testimony. I'm pretty open. Hallelujah. Ain't, ain't nothing too much, you know. That I won't share. I mean, you know, there's some private things I won't share. But uh, there's too much because you know what? I want to see people set free. Yeah. I want to see it delivered. And I want them to know that just because I am where I am today, I have not always been here. That I came from somewhere. Yeah. Glory to God. God has brought me from somewhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm not ashamed to, uh, uh, to say that. And it said uh, to restore to restore is to make whole and to cause to be at peace with. To make whole. To cause to be at peace with. Because mm. sometimes we have scattered ourselves. Hallelujah. Here, there, everywhere. <laughs> we have scattered ourselves. And I'm not just talking about sometimes when you say that people think you mean sexually. But in other ways. We have scattered ourselves. 
and worries and cares and all that stuff. But he came that he will restore and make us whole to bring us back to ourself. Hallelujah. My whole body belongs to God. <laughs> we used to sing that song a long time ago. My body belongs to God. Everything about me, my spirit, my soul, my body belongs to God. I'm whole now. I haven't always been whole, but I'm whole now. And it says to put back into existence or use. God wants to put you back to use. He does not call you to him just for you to sit. And sometimes people think that they have done so much that, you know what, I'm just going to come into church and sit down. Hallelujah. But God wants to restore. He wants to put you back to use. Hallelujah. I'm praying right now about a girl, her situation. She had something to happen uh, some years ago, and it happened in the church, and now she goes to church, but she won't get involved because of a, a sin that she committed. Repent it for it, but she won't get involved because of fear that that thing will happen again or that not being put in that position before people where people saw you fall. And she didn't, she didn't want to get back in that position because she didn't want people to have their eyes on her because she fell in that area before. But God wants to restore you to use. Once you get in fellowship with God, once you become born again, and if you're not in fellowship with God right now, you could get back in fellowship with God. He wants to put you back to use. He don't want you to come in and just sit down. He wants to put you back to use. God wants to do that for you. Because he's a restorer. And it says to bring back or to put back. So just like a puzzle piece. Because we're a body. We are. And if Sister Bev is out of sync, then our body is out of sync. That means we have something missing. We can function, but there's still something missing. We can't be all that we're supposed to be because something is missing. And God wants to put everybody back to use. He wants to restore. Amen. He wants to restore each one of you. Don't check your life. Oh, man, I did this wrong yesterday. Oh, man, I did this wrong. Stop it. <laughs> Just Mama Pat talking now. Stop. <laughs> Stop. If you do something wrong, repent. And get it back right. Just like that. If we sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's for us. That's for believers. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I have to say, oh, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So some of you have got stuck in a time or times in your life that was devastating. And you kept living, you kept going. You kept being saved. But emotionally and mentally, you relive those things that has happened or what you've done over and over again when you try to do this the enemy try to jerk your chain with something from the past and try to get you to go back but you have to keep walking and when he tries to jerk your chain you have to say I'm the righteous don't even look back at him I'm the righteousness of God Greater is he that is in me than he, does, than he that is in the world. God has made me righteous. I'm the head. I'm, I'm not the tail. I'm above. I'm not beneath. I'm blessed and I'm not cursed. Hallelujah. So get rid of those thoughts. That's any thoughts about your past that comes back to you. That's not God. 
When we repent about something, what does he say he does with it? Sometimes I got to, yep, in the sea. And you know what? So I got a vivid imagination. Just imagine <laughs> that we bring up something from our past. And God be like, what you talking about? Because, yes, that's good. So Bell said, I don't remember that. Because it's gone. So if it's gone with him, let it be gone with you. Whatever. Because God wants you to start receiving your blessings. John 10.10 10 says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. And he said that I am come that they might have what? Life. And that they have it more abundantly. The thief, this is amplified, the thief, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And I like the message. It says, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. Help me preach, Aubrey. It's <laughs> I came so they can have, look at this, so they can have real and eternal life. You know what? Real life is in Jesus. That's, that's the real life. That's the real thing. It's in Jesus. Oh, everything else out here, that's temporary. Real life is in Jesus Christ. More and better life than they ever dreamed of. More and better life than they ever dreamed of. Don't allow the enemy to keep stealing your blessings or keep holding your blessings back. You still alive? You still a believer? You still a candidate for the blessing. Lift up your hands and say, I receive my blessings. I receive my blessings. Amen. God is good. Let's praise God for the word on today. Hallelujah. God is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. Why don't you just lift your hands and give him a praise for a minute? God, we just receive right now. We lift up our hands, Lord God demonstrating that we receive oh God in the name of Jesus and God we're forgetting those things which are behind us oh God and we're pressing we're pressing we're pressing hallelujah we're walking by faith and not by sight in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus God is good. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. And receive your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we've come to a time in our service that if any of you here have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have an opportunity to do that right now. And those that are on Facebook and that will be watching on the internet, we want you to know that you have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if I were you, if I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I would make him my Savior today. I would not let this day go by without receiving him as my Lord and Savior. And sometimes, you know what? We don't like to talk about hell too much anymore. I notice. But let me tell you something. If you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't accept him, hallelujah, you will be destined for hell. And God came to seek, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. He loved you so much that he sent, God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him can receive eternal life. Hallelujah. So if you're here 
or if you're watching on internet or Facebook, I want you to bow your head right now and pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now as a sinner and I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came to the earth and was crucified on the cross for me. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ died for me, that he went to show and on the third day you raised him from the dead so that I can receive the blessing of eternal life. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me and I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus name amen if you pray that prayer with us we want you to know that you are born again uh, and you are uh, you can go to heaven today and what we would like for you to do is contact us and let us know that you made that decision for Christ and if you're here today we will get with you as soon as we end the uh, recording but if you're if you're uh, looking by Facebook or video we want to send you the book on the new birth so that you will know what happened to you today and that you'll be able to walk it out we don't want you to just receive Jesus and not know what to do afterwards but we have information for you and what you can do is go to our website www.abidingfaithchristiancenter.com leave the information and we will send the book to you so we thank you for tuning in today we thank you for those that are here in our services today and we know at abiding faith christian center if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you thank you from pastor rodney and i